What's wrong, Molly? Oh, oh no. Well, you're not making any sound, Molly. Are you okay? Oh, oh, why is the cat just sitting looking at you, Molly? What on earth has happened to you? Oh, Are you okay? Can you speak, Molly? Go on, please speak. Oh, can I really speak? Oh, no. What's happened? Oh, I don't know. Oh, no. Can I help you? Can I help you? I'll tell you what, let's let's try and get you to here and we'll try and look at the damage. I hope you're going to be okay, Molly, because you're, you're one of my best friends. I'll go and get help. Hang on a minute, Molly. Hang on. Okay. Oh, Molly. Poor you, stuck in bed now with your broken arm. What a shame. Molly, are you able to tell us what happened yet? What well, happened? Well, I was just going for a walk. Oh, was that your once a day walk? Yes. Hmm, what happened then? Why did you end up in the bush? Well, I just, I just, I just popped my head up. Oh. And I don't know if it was Jack. But somebody hit me really, really hard. They, they, they hit me in the arm. What? Yes. Oh no, you popped your head up and somebody hit you really, really hard well, on the arm? Well, I'm not, uh, I, well, I think nobody likes me really. Oh, Molly, that's not true. Well, Everybody complains because I make mounds of duck in a garden. Well, that's true, I must say. Remember that time they were doing all that work in the parky outside ours and suddenly there was lots of your family all in the garden leaving their heaps of muck. Oh, the dude was not too happy that day. Well, I live underground and I, I sometimes come up to see people. Oh, I see. I didn't know that's what you did. And, and when I did that, I think it was Jack. Jack just hit me in the arm. Oh, no. That's Jack for you. See, they all think it's me that's nasty, but it's that Jack. The quiet ones are the worst. You've got to watch out for them. <coughs> Anyway, oh, Mel, I'm sure he didn't mean it. But I wonder why he ran off. Did he not help you? No, I thought he might help me, but I was lying there until you came. Yeah, I noticed the cat was there. She'd obviously just strutted on by. Strut, strut, strut. Not looking near you. What a shame. Stupid cat. Well... It's not stupid, but poor you, Molly, I'm sorry. Do you know what? I was thinking about this, and I've got a feeling that the dude mentioned something about this kind of thing in his Bible he always speaks about. Yes, he probably did. I would think there's a story about that in the Bible. Do you believe in that Bible too, Molly? Yes. What? Gosh. Yes. Seems to be everybody but me that's not too sure. Hmm. Oh, well, I seem to think there was a story. Can you remember it, Molly? Well, I think so. Oh, can you tell me? Well, really, really, it was about the same kind of thing that happened to me. Oh, people tunnelling underground? No. Oh. A man walking by and he... and. He got hurt as well because some robbers came and stole all his money and everything. Oh, that's not good. And then somebody else came and, well, they did what you did, Joe. They took me to hospital. Oh, that's what I did. And good on the NHS. They were so nice being so busy with the coronavirus. They still said... You need to come in if you fall or break a bone or something so that they can help you get better. 
So we did. And they allowed me to sing my song. Ah! Oh, <laughs> no, Lou. Joe. What? Can I tell the rest of the story? Oh, sorry, Molly, sorry. Because people really need to be kind. And that's what the story's all about. Just like you were kind and Jack wasn't kind because he was boss. Oh, Jack. How could you? So I really, I really thank you for being so kind and helping me to the hospital, Joe. Oh, that's okay, Bolly. That's what friends are for. This is a time for us all to be kind, to look out for our neighbours, to look out for our family, and to help each other, because we're all going through this virus together. That's true. Joe? Yep? Will you come back and see me? Of course I will, Molly. I just need to nip outside because I was going to deliver another food parcel. But I'm not going to sing this week. Oh. Oh, you sound sad. Would you like me to sing? Well, it's up to you. Well, no, I don't need to sing this week because we've got a special guest. Hmm? Well, we've two. Huh? Yes, we've got a special guest at the end today leading worship called Mark. Oh. He was my friend. He used to stay in Bucky. He still is. I FaceTime him and say, Hi! Oh. And then the next special guest is coming on now and her name is Barbara and she is going to do a reading from the Bible today. Oh, that'll be good. How cool is that? That's great. I'm looking forward to that because I like to hear the Bible being read. Well, ah, oh, now you make me feel bad, awkward position. I wasn't going to listen, but maybe I better. I think I'll stay and listen to Barbara as she reads us a story from the Bible. Okay, Molly, I hope you're feeling better soon and I'll find that Jack and I'll find out what he was thinking about. Okay then. Okay then, Thanks Molly. Thanks for visiting me in hospital. It's okay. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. One day, an expert in religious law stood up to test Jesus by asking him this question. Teacher, what must I do to receive eternal life? Jesus replied, what does the law of Moses say? How do you read it? The man answered, you must love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, all your strength and all your mind and love your neighbour as yourself. Right, Jesus told him. Do this and you will live. The man wanted to justify his actions, so he asked Jesus, And who is my neighbour? Jesus replied with an illustration. A Jewish man was travelling on a trip from Jerusalem to Jericho and he was attacked by bandits. They stripped him of his clothes and money, beat him up and left him half dead beside the road. By chance, a Jewish priest came along and when he saw the man lying there, he crossed the other side of the road and passed him by. A temple assistant walked over and looked at him lying there, but he also passed on the other side. Then a despised Samaritan came along and when he saw the man, he felt deep pity. Kneeling beside him, the Samaritan soothed his wounds with medicine and bandaged them. Then he took, he put the man on his own donkey and took him to the inn where he took care of him. The next day he handed the innkeeper two pieces of silver and told him to take care of the man. If this bill runs higher than that, he said, I'll pay the difference the next time I am here. Now which of these three would you say was a neighbour to the man who was attacked by the bandits? Jesus asked. The man replied, the one who showed him mercy. Then Jesus said, yes, 
and I'll go and do the same. Well, good morning, folks. It's great to see you here this morning again, and we just like to thank Barbara for reading that story from Luke chapter 10. It is an amazing story, and if I be honest, it's probably one of my favourite stories um, or favourite parables. I just seem to get a lot out of it every time that I read it. And of course, it is a parable of the Good Samaritan. We see in this parable that we can take probably two things out of it this morning. Um, the first one, looking for a church's perspective, um, which includes, which would include society as well, but then we see it from another perspective, which we've kind of touched on before, and it is uh, for the perspective of somebody who really doesn't see themselves as inheriting the kingdom of God. Inheriting the kingdom. Um, and we see this in two questions. And the first question is, who is my neighbour? And then the, quest the second question that we've touched on before is, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? Now, just to give a brief summary of this parable, um, we see that there's some guys walking down a road and there's somebody lying there who has been mugged to bring it up to date. They've been robbed. His possessions have been taken from him and he's pretty severely beaten up. We get that idea because he gets taken to an inn um, and he needs to recuperate in that place. And as I said, we're going to take this for a couple of um, perspectives. First of all for the church um, and then from society as a whole. And we're going to look at the two questions that I mentioned before. Who is my neighbour and what shall I do to inherit eternal life? So who is my neighbour? Absolutely brilliant question because of course it's not just speaking about the person who lives directly next door to us. It does go, and I do feel it goes wider than that. If we look at W. E. Vine, who is a bib or was a biblical scholar, and in his Bible word studies, um, we see that he says in regards to neighbour, as anyone, as anyone who lives in the same land, or we would. We would look at that as saying anyone who lives in the same country. But of course, as we know, um, modern technology would widen that. Um, certainly when W.E. Vine was in a go, then he wouldn't have the same technology as we've got today. And because of the internet, um, um, I believe that who is my neighbour can go a lot wider. It can be global, it can be worldwide in that term. So really, anybody is our neighbour. Another thing that I noticed within this parable is that it doesn't say, or it doesn't distinguish between race, religion, or our status within the community. It doesn't distinguish in terms of sexuality. In other words, there is no discrimination at all. It just says, who is my neighbour? It's interesting to see that two individuals who we would expect really to help in this matter, and I think this is where there's a massive message to the church, because first of all, we see that a priest a minister, a, a, a person, a leader of a church, if you like, then they walk past and it's almost as if they just give him a glance and keep going. For me, this is really, really puzzling because you would think that somebody like that would stop and help in that sense. And then a Levite, um, he bypasses as well. Now a Levite would be a kind of understudy of the priest, um, so he would be. And again, 
you would really expect if the priest didn't do it, then surely the Levite um, who would come along, that understudy who would come along, then they would have the time to stop and help this poor man who's lying at the side of the road. But none of them, sadly, actually take the time just to see if he's okay. But then there's another chap who comes along and in the Bible it speaks about a Samaritan and um, a Samaritan folks, the one who really renowned for their kindness, wouldn't it be the thing that would be their natural bent, as it were? Um, they would probably be a, a kind of mixed nationality, we could say. Some commentaries would say that he was... Um, from Hebrew descent and Jewish descent. Um, but certainly they wouldn't have the same law. They wouldn't have the same religious standing as what the priest and a Levite would have. Um, they would have their own version, if you like, of the laws. Um, so they would. So it is certainly a different character altogether. Um, and as I say, it's somebody who by nature wouldn't um, really go out their way to help another person. And yet, as this chap that stops, um, puts him on his mode of transport and takes him to the inn to get um, well again. And it's quite interesting because he just, he just doesn't do that. But he says to the keeper of the inn, he says, whatever expenses is incurred, then I'll pay for that on my road home. So we see that this lad does a massive, massive act of kindness, as it were. And again we see, um, if we look at the word towards the end of the, of the chapter, that Jesus doesn't differentiate between these folks. Um, we see that he just looks on them as man as a human being. Um, we read at the end Jesus saying, Who is your neighbour? And the reply came back, Well, it's the one that showed mercy. And of course, as we know, Jesus, I think, in this is linking this to a time in the future where um, he would show mercy, show mercy to us, um, so he would. And we'll maybe come on to that in a minute or two. But again, if we look at um, some of the word studies, some of the Bible dictionaries, and just look at this meaning, um, mercy, we see that it means to show pity, to have compassion, or to show sympathy um, for another and the idea behind it is not just, not just a case to say, oh, that's a shame, that person's really been beat up. But it's actually to, to, to take it that bit further. Because what we see is, it's almost as if the person who's looking on is feeling the same pain as the person who was hurt. And of course, as we can say that Jesus showed us mercy on the cross. Um, and the way that that's linked, I think, is that he took our pain, he has took our sin, he has took our hurt and bore that on the cross as well. So I suppose one lesson that we can learn from this is that Jesus is saying, let's really start breaking down the religious barriers. Let's just look at our communities. Let's look at our societies. Let's look at these folks worldwide who are hurting, um, who may be in poverty. Um, and let's just find a way to help in that sense or help them in their circumstances. But of course, it's not just financial. Um, it is physical. It is mental. And it is spiritual as well. And these are all areas that we give God thanks for because some of the churches are being involved in this um, and we give God thanks for that. But maybe there's always that wee bit more that we can do. 
maybe just even in our own neighbourhood, if we keep a constant eye on our neighbourhood and see who is hurting, see who's struggling, and just draw alongside them as this man would draw alongside them and help them in any way that we can. It may be putting us out, I'm sure, as this man was on his journey, that he had to go his way to help this lad who was hurting. And maybe uh, Jesus is saying to us, sometimes you just need to go out your way to help those who are hurting. He does say later on in the scriptures that if somebody goes a mile for us, let's go an extra mile. Let's do that wee bit more for others. Now, it also says in that that we have to love our, love our neighbour as ourself. Strong's Concordance, there are many meanings for this word love in Scripture. And Strong's Concordance gives us one definition of it. And that is the whole idea of charity and kindness. <clears throat> Um, and I think even in this, um, the Jesus is telling the church, let's be charitable. Let's stop thinking about ourselves. Let's think out of the box. Let's think how we can help those in need, those who might be struggling, and show them kindness. It might be picking up the phone. It might just be visiting somebody who's struggling and just having a kind word with them. One of the things that I've really enjoyed um, about this time that we've been in quarantine is the fact that, like just now, um, we're just having a conversation, as it were. That we're just sitting, speaking about scriptures. And I think, actually, some of the courses that's going on at the moment, like, say, the Alpha Course or Christianity Explored, that is the whole concept behind it, that we just have a conversation about what the Bible's telling us. And I've really enjoyed just sitting, being out with a building in one sense, a church building in one sense, a church setting as we would know it, and just having a conversation about what the Bible's trying to tell us, what Jesus is trying to tell us in these circumstances. So as I say, let's look at this and let's say, okay, we need to start breaking down these religious barriers. We need to stop focusing on the religiosity of churches out there. And we need to look at the practical aspects where Jesus is saying, just go and help your neighbour. And show mercy, as I have shown you mercy, you show others mercy as well. And let's start having a real impact on our local communities. As I said, it's great to see our communities, helping each other, your neighbour, uh, during these time, all the different support groups that there is going on. And whether this is church support groups or just community support groups, we just need to give God thanks for that. The Queen, in her speech, she actually had mentioned that our streets, although physically, might be empty. Um, but there is a lot of love in our streets. And you know, that is so true, that it is an absence of love because we see the care, the compassion of others in the villages and the towns and the cities in which we live. And we give God thanks for that. And I think we need to keep that up and keep that going. But our second point, or our second question is, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? A massive question. Um, I do believe that there is an eternal life, there is an afterlife, after death, that there is something to look forward to, that there will be a new heaven and a new earth. Um, it does say in the scriptures, as we'll see later on, it does say in the scriptures that the older things have passed away and there is a new, um, God is going to set up a new, a new heaven and a new earth. And that's something 
really to look forward to. That's something to um, be excited about in one sense. I would hate to think that after this life is finished, that's it. I like to think that there is something better after this, uh, after this life. And again, we see within this, we see that Jesus doesn't discriminate between anybody. He treats everybody on an equal basis. Um, he is speaking to everyone, no matter where we stand in society, no matter our religion, no matter our sexual orientation, no matter our, uh, our belief system, but Jesus is speaking to absolutely everyone. He's speaking to the world when he's saying this. And we need to think about that. We need to really consider these things. Is there an eternal life? And if so, do I want to be part of that eternal life? Some of the things that we've got, as I said, the new um, the new is coming and the old will pass away. Some of the things that's in the old, um, we read in Re Revelation 21, because it says, He will wipe away every tear from their eyes, and death shall be no more. Neither shall be mourning, nor crying, nor pain, for the former things have passed away. We've seen a lot of crying, a lot of mourning, a lot of death. Too many, really, if we be honest. But that will be finished in eternity because these older things have passed away. But that question is still there. And it is a question, how do I personally inherit eternal life? I've quoted this passage quite a lot um, and I don't apologise for quoting again because in John 14 verse 6 Jesus says I am the way, the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Now the way that he's speaking about there is that path to eternity. That path to eternal, eternal life. So it's only through Jesus that we can inherit eternal life. It is only through Jesus that we will see the Father. Of course, the Father is God. And that is the reason, I've mentioned this before, but that's the reason why um, Jesus died and rose again in the cross. So that he makes it possible that we can inherit that eternal life. As I say, one of the saddest things I see, especially through this time, is the loss of life of so, so many. And Jesus is saying, despite this, then there is something else that we can look forward to. And the way that we can inherit eternal life is one of the simplest things that we can do. Jesus tells us later on in the scriptures and others tell us later on in the, in, the, in the scriptures that all we need to do is ask for forgiveness of our sins, repent of our sins and then confess our sins. And it says that in that it will be, be that we are saved. We manage to inherit salvation we manage to inherit eternal life. And so, if we bow in knee, if we come in prayer before God, before Jesus, then we confess and ask for forgiveness. Then we will, and I say this reverently, we will get a ticket to eternity. I think it's something that everyone should be considering. Are you ready for an afterlife? And again, we see through this parable that nobody is excluded. He would welcome everybody. And the condition is that we find a way, that we look 
for that way. And if we find a way through Jesus, then we will see the truth and then we will have life and we'll be able to access the Father who is in heaven. So I would, I would like to try and urge you and can ask you to consider these things seriously. Am I going to inherit eternal life? Am I going to do as Jesus says? Show mercy to those who are struggling at this time. Before we come to our act of worship, then I would just like to have a time of prayer and we can come before God in prayer um, just thinking about the many things that happen or, is ha or are happening at this time. So let's just come before God in prayer and we'll just spend about five minutes or so in prayer. Father, first of all, <coughs> first of all, we like to thank you for all the different acts of kindness. Father, we think of all those who have responded to this terrible tragedy, those who are helping support others in their local area. Father, we just give you thanks for that kindness. Father, we just thank, give you thanks for those who are willing to give up their time just to try and help those who may be struggling. Father, we thank you for all those who have volunteered for the different emergency services. Father, those who have come out of retirement, those who are getting involved, those who have changed jobs um, to be able to help through this means. And Father, again, we just pray for our NHS workers in hospitals and in care homes. Father, we ask for their protection in a mighty way. Lord, look after them, we ask. Watch over them and keep them safe. And also those who work in the front line. So many to mention. But Lord, these folks are, in one sense, taking a huge risk just to be able to serve us. So, Father, we pray for them. Lord, we pray that you would watch over them. Lord, we pray that you would keep them safe. Father, we think of the elderly in our societies as well. Those who, for loneliness, is a real thing. Father, it's really begun to hit hard, this loneliness that they find themselves in. Father, again, we ask that you would watch over them, keep them safe. And Lord, we pray that someone may just lift the phone and give them a call. It may be through FaceTime or some other medium, Father, but we just pray that these folks would be okay. Father, those who have been affected by coronavirus, Lord, we pray for their um, healing. Again, Father, we just pray that you would come in in a mighty way watch over them we're asking also those who are in recovery lord we've been hearing stories through the media how difficult it is once this virus has been treated and yet they're still feeling under the weather they're still struggling physically and lord we pray for their health to be restored and lord we think of those teachers and PSAs that are working in hubs at the moment, we thank you again for them. Um, we thank you that they volunteer just to go into these hubs and work. And Lord, we think about the government. Lord, we realise that they have got massive decisions to make regarding the safest way to start their exit strategy. Lord, we pray that they would seek guidance. Lord, that you would impart knowledge and wisdom into them as they would look into the best way for this to happen. But also, Lord, we pray for those of the communities that we live in, that we would be sensible in this as well. Father, that they would try to prevent a second wave of this coronavirus coming. And Lord, we think, as we've been already mentioning, we think of the families who are mourning. Father, how 
they haven't been able to have any kind of funeral service that they normally would have liked. Lord, we just pray that you would be with them. Father, they may have questions. And Lord, we would pray that we would be able to help in these questions. Father, we think of those who may have been plunged into financial insecurity as well. <coughs> Lord, we pray that you would give them what they need. Father, that you would reassure them that it is near the end. Father, that it may be the beginning of something new. And Lord, we pray for the many businesses that have lost their business. Lord, we pray that there might be some way that this could be restored. All those who are losing jobs as well, Father. Lord, we just pray for them. Lord, that they would find new employment or their old employment back again. Lord, there is dire circumstances that we face. But Father, we thank you that you promise us and we ask for that promise that you will supply all our needs. And Lord, we know that you've done in the, this in the past and we know that you can do it again. And Lord, we think of those who may be suffering from mental health issues. Again, Lord, we just pray that you would draw close to them. Father, give them peace of mind. Father, just watch over them, we ask, and keep them safe. And again, bring someone into their lives that they can just have a conversation to, with and speak to. And so, Lord, we just ask all these things in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Now we're going to finish our service this morning um, with someone who used to minister here in Bucky, um, Mark and Jordan Anderson. And we're going to just spend a wee while just in worship with Mark and Jordan. So let's worship. Um, they're going to sing the song, I Raise a Hallelujah, which incidentally is a healing, a healing song. And we believe that there is going to be healing brought to our nation and globally as well. So let's worship with Mark and Jordan. I raise a hallelujah In the presence of my enemies I raise a hallelujah
Hallelujah.